So, uh, welcome to the uh, last very short um, tutorial part for our uh, corporal of the 19th Infantry Brigade. Mm -hmm. We'll paint his rifle. Uh, it will be in a very nice dark brown tone, um, similar to the color of his hair, also to, to get a little color harmony. So, we will take the uh, vermin brown, an old game social paint, mix it with some black, and start with that as a quite dark base tone. Mm -hmm. We did some research on how these uh, Civil War rifles looked. Uh, you have to keep in mind how the weapon will be actually attached to the figure. So at the moment I'm just painting the backside. Mm -hmm. But I choose that because uh, here this element of the weapon is quite nice, so it's nicer to see when I'm painting the little metal elements. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but keep in mind where you want to put the highlight and the focus because it should not be on that side. Yeah, and this is really dark right now. It's uh, dark brown over black. Yeah. Might be quite hard to see, but uh, we will get, once we get lighter and put, mm -hmm. some, put some white in there, we'll change easily. Here we'll do some uh, classical uh, one brush blending technique. So the loaded brush. The loaded brush. So you got the base color on there and then a lighter ba uh, base color with white on the tip. Yeah. Both rather thin, thin so yeah, uh, I might do it a little bit thicker. You should see how the paint dries there. You can literally watch paint dry. <laughs> Actually, I got that question today uh, from someone, um, the difference between a wash and a glaze um, and how to tell if you're doing it right. <laughs> and uh, so basically, a wash is a very, very watery wash, literally a wash. You just wash the miniature with whatever you have on the brush and then collects in the recesses. A glaze is something where basically you have a very thin uh, diluted paint and um, you um, remove all of the excess liquid from the brush. That is the, the, the biggest difference. And what you just saw, the way that the paint uh, dries, is actually a good indication if you have a right consistency. Like when you put the paint on and it uh, starts drying right away and you can actually see the, the liquid evaporate, that's a good, good glaze consistency. Now it's a bit better to see yeah. the highlight here to the side. In real life it looks more dramatic than here on the camera, I think. Um, yeah, I will now start to draw in little lines to indicate the uh, fiber of the wood. Mm -hmm. And then just re readjust the highlights a tiny bit. Um, I don't want the wood grain to be visible uh, too much because uh, actually you can hardly see any wood grain on those in real life. Yeah. But um, it's good to do, do a little bit more in miniature. So first of all, some dark lines. Can you see it actually at all? <laughs> I can I can see it. It depends a little bit, I guess, on the monitor and the kind of uh, ambient light people watching this in. <laughs> it's, so it's hard to see. It's there. Okay, again, highlights just next to it, so I think you might see the highlights a bit better. Definitely can see that. Yeah, but as we don't want it to look like a pedal in the mm. end, uh, <laughs> we really need to get some of that down. So, um, so you're glazing over it again. Yeah, with some uh, with some ink uh, again to get a nice deep wood look. Yeah, I think I'll use some flash wash. Ah, okay. It's a bit more yellow or orange than the 
Eh, den dottern kvar. Eh, den blir vad ska jag kalla chessen den. Mhm. And now we just with the clean brush. Put it towards the sides. It's almost like the, the varnish on the weapon. You can see how it dries away. So that is a glaze. Yeah, it wash is really like all over the place and you do that to get like uh, all the recesses mm. uh, full of pigments so you ha uh, have those popping out a bit stronger and yeah uh, glaze is just more for getting a uh, softer color transition so first we had lines we hardly saw then we had very visible lines and now we are back to lines that are somewhere between hardly visible and uh, very visible <laughs> but again i think again this is something that um even if it's, if it's hard on camera once you have this piece in your hand and you look at it, and let's say you're judging this piece as a judge on a, on a competition, you will notice the wood, and on second glance you will notice that there's actually a structure of the wood. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing that you need for competitions as well. Those kind of details are really nice for the eye because you watch uh, the piece closely and you say, ah, oh, okay, nice. There's like really texture. Also the gloss of the, the ink is a good example for something that is really helping the figure to look better in the end because you get that would like look in the yeah. end. I think I would do this step here also on the back of the rifle, mm -hmm. which is actually the front. And then we are ready for the metal parts. Mm -hmm. Then we turn it around, um, paint the hand, put it in place, and then we're ready for the final highlights on the weapon. All right. So the, the part I want to show you here is that very small uh, metal element in the rifle. Mm -hmm. um, something like that is ideal for a tiny loaded brush technique. Um, because you could just uh, go there with some um, black in the brush and some bright metal paint such as silver or aluminium, something like that in the tip. You are using italics now? Yeah. And you only have one water pot? No, I have two. Okay. Why do you have two water pots? Because I don't want to ruin all the other spots with metal paint. That's correct. Um, you will be painting his hands later and we don't him, want him to be all glittery. <laughs> Very important to realize. Some people even use different brushes for that. Yeah. It's not a bad idea actually. Because uh, the metal pigments are really hard to get rid of once you have them in the in the brush or in the water. Yeah, and metal pigments also something that you can't just fix with a glaze. Once you have them somewhere, you have to actually cover them completely. Okay, so again, tip, highlight color. Because that's another tip for you, um, painting true metal is that you don't just paint the whole area in one shade of true metal. Um, sometimes it's just enough to pick out some raised areas or sharp details and keep the rest like dark or darker. Yeah, you need a variation in there. It's a, actually it's a little bit like painting uh, painting non-metal as well. Mm -hmm. You need to place the lights. So the rifle will be exposed like this to the sun. So I actually have to put the highlights also up here. Yeah. 
I mean, there's no big, no really big secret about this right now. Um, this is not uh, rocket science. <laughs> no, uh, actually, yeah, it's it's quite a quick and easy part. Nothing too dramatic. You don't want it to be too shiny. Keep that in mind because mm. you don't want it to be sticking out too much of the figure. But we can always adjust that once the, once we have it in place at the mo uh, at the model. Mm. So how how are, you, how are you going to do the uh, bayonet? Because that's like more a blade shape is, is it also going to be I, I mean are you going to be using a little more advanced uh, blending there or what's what's your plan there we'll start with the dark metal tone and do some tiny scratches on it to give it a little bit more texture because it's also quite high yeah. uh, compared with the figure so it's near the face so we need a little bit more detail there I think that, that in itself is just a very interesting statement. It's near to the face, so we need more detail there. Because, of course, the, the face is the most worked on part of the whole miniature. Uh, it's the most detailed part, um, and the most expressive part. And you don't want to put something next to it that just looks like yeah, crap. Yeah, if it, really, if it's just very close to the face, the details need to be in a good level. So, because the eye is wandering around, just spotting the face as, as a first thing because it's usually the brightest and yeah. most vibrant with a lot of colors in a small area and then the eyes after that search for another point and if you have metal just next to it and it's just without details it's it's not very good yeah and then i think it would just take the pure silver color it's uh, from model air I quite like those as well they're really fine pigmented yeah very bright I would just do like tiny lines on there. I'm doing it a bit to the top. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very simple as well, but just a little bit more elaborate than the than the other one. We also go there and just wash a tiny bit of brown in there to as well make it a little more in harmony with the rest of the piece. Mm. So uh, use some red brown for that, especially here in the lower part. Yeah, it's a very thin area, so it's uh, we're, we're using maybe 4.2% uh, of our screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me just quickly finish those parts first off cam here, mm -hmm. the small metal parts, so there's nothing interesting here. And then we will attach the hand to the figure and then paint the hand so mm -hmm. we can see where we put the lights because it's easier on the figure. Yeah, did you paint the hand by the way? Uh, no, because uh, it has quite a large piece that is inserted into the arm. Okay, it's like a little peg there? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so now uh, you fix the um, rifle and the, well, you refix the bayonet. <laughs> 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 you fix the rifle to the miniature. Yep. And now we're painting the black hand. Yes, Mr. Black Hands. So uh, we'll start with some uh, Talon flesh. The face that we've also used for the uh, the color that we also use for the face, mm -hmm. uh, and mix it with some Scotch brown as we want to start darker as the face. Are you confident that all of the metal pigments have left the building? Uh, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. We changed <laughs> the water, okay. Uh, so okay. So yeah, it's important that you also hit the part here that is almost hidden under the arm mm. and also the upper part here. Yeah, that's an important point because um, on a competition, um, the judges will pick up the miniature and definitely turn it upside down and try to look at all of the areas. You don't really want to miss anything. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's it's quite disappointing. You can find like uh, just a blank black spot right there. So. Yeah. So yeah, make sure you reach the elements. You can see I left some black lines here. Mm -hmm. uh, those are obviously too strong, but it's a quite good indicator for what can stay a little bit darker. So I'm mixing a darker tone, and just placing it there. And I think the uh, consistency of the paint is pretty much covering right now, isn't yeah. it? It's a little thinner than before, so now we have the, uh, the basic tone showing, showing through a little. Mm. Mm, and we can just take the clean brush and I was using the side of the brush to go for the raised areas yeah. and leave the dark one, the dark paint inside the recesses. Right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You're very clever, sir. <laughs> so yeah, you can see uh, in comparison with the other hand, it's way too dark, so we need highlights. Mm, for highlights, we will just uh, load the brush with our dark base tone and put the the pure color and flesh into the tip of the brush and just try to pick out small volumes on the hand like the knuckles for example you don't want the finger to end up to just looking like little sausages so you need to work on the different little volumes and little, little edges on the the fingers. The cave it's a little too too much contrast mm -hmm. in the beginning because you can always glaze that with a middle tone. Uh, you just at that stage you just want to get the the volumes straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can see it on the other hand where the contrast overall has been reduced quite a bit, uh, but it looks very natural and lifelike. I really like that hand. Make sure you go quite bright on top. Because this part here would be hit by the light the most. Mm. And it's quite good to see by using just the pure color here and there, it's easily the, the same level and brightness. Yeah. It's actually a little difficult because you're painting these like with days of uh, a gap between them, right? So yeah. you want to make sure that you hit, hit the same tone. Yeah, I have. Uh, but I would say quite a good natural feeling for how to remix colors. Mm. But yeah, just having one base tone for your skin, for example, and going back to that could really help. Yeah. If you're not that good in that by nature. Or if you're actually painting something, let's say you're painting something for an army uh, in a completely wild color scheme, uh, Sometimes it just helps to have a little book of uh, colors that you use yeah. and just um, just paint in the book. Say, this is the color I use, this is what I mixed with it. And then you can have a reference for um, later paint jobs. Yeah, it's also very good if you do commission painting, for example, to just write down your recipe. So you have mm -hmm. like a small recipe book. Okay, so with a little darker mid-tone here in between the knuckles. And a bit brighter with some white metallic flesh. Yeah, that really helps helps it pop out and become more three dimensional. Now the consistency is a lot thinner and I try to just smooth things out a little on the top for the highlights.
right. Contrast here mm, is quite a bit too strong. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the lines are not really uh, straight and the, the highlights are too strong. So mixing a glaze with the uh, middle tone between the dark shadow and the highlight tone. Mm -hmm. And then we're just glazing over the whole thing. No, it was a bit too much in the mesh. So this was almost a little washy. Yeah. We talked about this earlier. No, just like that. Yeah, washi would basically just flood the whole hand and just let it gather in the recesses. And now with the glaze, you see how Ben is very um, deliberately placing the glaze in areas where he wants it to be. And again, what it does is, is the mid-tone between the highlight and the, the um, yeah, not quite the base tone, but a little bit uh, between those two. And it just creates a very thin coating, which then brings those two areas together. Also a great tool to hide blending mistakes. <laughs> it's yeah, just like that. Then I think then the hand feels a lot, a lot nicer now. A bit darker color here to separate the thumb room. And a little highlight here on the top of the thumb. Yeah. And knuckles. <laughs> nice. yeah, this is not really rocket science, just you need to do, know what you're doing and uh, just take your time a little bit. I mean, this overall did take about 10 minutes or so. Yeah. But it's just important to uh, take it step by step. And I think I'll just to make the two hands match a little more, I'll even just go here and Increase the, the mid shadow here a bit in the, the red. So I have the more the same level. Mm -hmm. Yep, beautiful. Yep. Okay. All right. Nice. So, yeah, I think we're done. And I'm, I'm really happy how it turned out. Yeah. And uh, I'd say, first of all, this was a rather short video, but I think there was a lot of really good tips in there. For those of you watching this for free right now on YouTube, uh, first of all, welcome. Thanks for watching. Yeah, definitely. Secondly, you might wonder where the base came from. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> while we do, uh, I would say, 90% of our videos for free on YouTube, um, some of them are exclusive to our uh, Painting Buddha Academy members. Yeah. Um, this is one video, uh, one of the shorter ones. Uh, we have some that are an hour. Um, we have uh, a plan for 14 episodes, so basically 14 projects. This was the fourth project. And these 14 episodes start at 42 euros. That is a pretty sweet deal. So it is indeed. Yeah, if, if, you're, if you enjoy these videos and your painting career is worth about 70 cents a week, uh, you might want to check out with paintingbuddha.com. See you there. All right. Thanks again, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.